Hey everyone, I'm Kate Morton. My husband and I are full-time RVers and we typically travel in a fifth wheel RV. We lived and traveled, however, for six months in a truck camper on the Go North Expedition to Alaska and the Arctic Ocean. A common question we get is what is it like driving a truck camper? Today we're gonna talk about that as well as what it's like driving it off-road. Truck campers and the trucks that haul them come in a variety of sizes and shapes, but no matter what, you're gonna wanna find a truck that is capable of carrying the additional bulk of a truck camper. Our setup was a 2020 Lance 1172 truck camper, the biggest one that they make, on a 2019 Ford F350 diesel dual rear wheel truck. While this was a bigger truck camper, it still was much smaller than we were used to pulling in our fifth wheel. We were already used to driving a big dually truck, so that was no big change for us. But having the much lighter load in the back felt like driving a sports car around in comparison. Even though it's a lot easier, you can't be lulled into a false sense of security while driving these things. While you are able to keep up with traffic a little bit more than say a 35 foot fifth wheel, you're going to want to remember a few things to drive safely while in traffic. The addition of the truck camper means that you're a lot taller and if you are used to pulling something more substantial, you might find yourself, like me, forgetting sometimes that you even have the truck camper on. You're going to want to remember that height because you might be going under bridges, you might be going through tunnels, and the biggest thing is you're going to want to watch for those tree branches. Wind is another thing to consider. You have a much bigger profile, so you're going to get pushed around by the wind quite a bit more. When driving in windy conditions, you are going to want to slow down, or if you're feeling nervous, you might just want to pull over and wait it out. In addition to the height, you're also going to have the additional weight of the truck camper. When considering the weight, you're going to have to think about stopping distance. You're going to need more time to brake if the car in front of you slams on their brakes. And you're also going to want to think about acceleration and giving yourself enough time to speed up to get into traffic. You're also probably going to want to tackle hills a little bit differently, needing to get down into lower gears to go uphill or shift down to help the truck slow down when you're coming down the hill. We used our tow haul function on the truck quite a bit, which changes the shifting pattern to allow the truck to handle the additional weight much better. And we used our engine brake a lot to slow down coming off of hills or just to regular stop signs if we could see them coming far enough ahead of time. The additional height and the additional weight on the truck changes its center of gravity. And this is a big thing with driving the truck camper and the thing that we notice most. The second you start driving a truck camper, you're going to notice that it sways quite a bit more. It's got this body roll. You're gonna feel it when you make a turn or hit a bump. It's going to just move the whole truck differently than what you're used to. In severe circumstances, if you hit a bump, it can cause porpoising, which means that the truck camper weight is moving forward while the truck is starting to come back up and you can actually have the top of the truck camper hit the top of the truck. You're going to want to take that into consideration while you're driving. If you see bumps coming up, you're going to want to slow down so that you don't cause that. To help handle that weight, you might want to beef up your suspension. We had a couple of airbags added to our truck so that with the sagging of the weight of the truck camper in the bed, the airbags are able to bring that back up to a level ride height. This is going to help with clearance and overall handling. It's also going to make sure that your headlights don't blind oncoming traffic at night. One of the things that you can do to help with the sway control is to have stiffer sway bars. Most vehicles come with sway bars, but most of the time when you're talking about the load of a truck camper, they're not beefy enough to handle that kind of additional weight and that raised center of gravity. Keep in mind that sway bars don't actually start working until it starts to sway. So you are still going to feel a little bit of that rocking and that is what really took the most getting used to. So depending on what kind of truck camper you have, you may or may not have issues with tail swing or rear end clearance. Our truck camper extended four feet off the back of the bed of the truck. So we had to be really cognizant of clearance, say coming out of a gas station with a really steep incline. And we also had to worry about our tail swing. If we were backing up or swinging out of something, we needed to make sure that the tail swing wasn't going to run into anything. As far as visibility, 
It was pretty good down the sides. You could use your side mirrors pretty easily. We had them folded up into the towing configuration because the truck camper did sit a little bit wider. But when you have a truck camper in the bed of your truck, you're not going to be able to use your rear view mirror. You're really gonna wanna consider getting a backup camera so that when you are backing up or you're driving down the road, you can see what's behind you just for overall driving safety. If you happen to be traveling with somebody, you're gonna wanna use them as a spotter for backing up because even that backup camera can't see those taller branches that might be above its viewing area. Driving the truck camper means that you are in the truck. You are not in the same space as the RV. So it's very quiet. It sounds like driving a truck. You're not hearing all the squeaks and cracks from being inside of a Class B motorhome or a van or something like that. You'll also notice that the truck camper does move around in the bed of the truck quite a bit. There would be times where we would see it out of the corner of the windshield or out the side view mirror, that they do kind of move around back there and that is completely normal. That movement might actually shift the truck camper in the bed of the truck. And if you feel like it gets too far to one side or the other, you might want to dismount and remount to straighten it back out. You're also gonna to wanna to check your turnbuckles every time to make sure that they are at the proper tension to hold it in place. Prior to our trip to Alaska, we had no truck camper experience whatsoever. I actually never really drove the fifth wheel much at all, except on interstates where there were easy on and off ramps. For this trip, however, I felt very comfortable getting behind the wheel. It only took maybe about an hour or two of driving in a high wind situation and through the mountains for me to figure out how the truck camper moved and get just familiar about its limitations and, and get used to that sway movement. After that, I felt very comfortable driving for most of the 15,000 miles that we did on this expedition. That was a huge thing for me. It was very liberating and freeing that I was able to contribute and do some of the driving and I actually really enjoyed it. If you wanna carry a truck camper, you don't necessarily need a dual rear wheel truck, but the dualies have higher weight carrying capacities and do help tremendously with sway and handling wind and things like that. Dualies may actually be required depending on the weight of the truck camper, which truck campers these days can range all the way up to close to 6,000 pounds. While dualies will allow you to carry a bigger truck camper, you might not have quite the off-roading capabilities of a single rear wheel. We had big plans to do a lot of off-roading while we were on our Alaska expedition, but the dualies were a little bit limiting in that regard because dual rear wheels can get rocks lodged in between them. They don't fit on the trail as nicely if you're just going down a single two track. And with the additional wheels, if they're not fitting on the trail just right, that one wheel might not actually touch the ground and that's not great for weight distribution and control. Generally speaking, truck campers make RVing off-road pretty easy. Even in their stock configuration, they can be better than a Class B motorhome or a van because of their high clearance and the easy access to 4x4 capabilities in trucks. Your truck camper off-road capabilities are going to vary significantly depending on your setup. Us with our large truck camper and our dually were limited in the trails that we could go down and the places we could go, but we still were opened up to a whole new world of roads. We use the truck camper's off-roading capabilities to drive thousands of miles of gravel roads and seasonal roads that we wouldn't have attempted otherwise. We then also utilized the high clearance and 4x4 to tackle a little bit more technical short distances to get off the road and find some really sweet campsites. As far as the 4x4 capabilities, we really use that in very select circumstances, like for going through some mud, dealing with really thick, loose gravel, uh, slippery grass, things like that. We never use the 4x4 to get out somewhere. The general rule of thumb is to only use 4x4 to get out of a bad situation. Another handy thing about the 4x4 is using the 4 low gear. And that was really great when we had to crawl through situations or even just to crawl up onto leveling blocks to level the truck camper. It allows you to move really slow with a lot of power and maintain your control. 
When you're off-roading, you're going to want to make sure to keep an eye on your overheight clearance, particularly the branches. Now, if you have a shorter pop-up camper in the back of your truck, you're probably not going to worry about this as much, but we were about 12 feet tall, so we had to constantly be watching for branches. As I mentioned before, our truck camper hung off the back a little ways, so we also had to make sure that if we went over any big dips that we checked the tail to make sure we weren't going to be scraping our stairs, which hung off pretty low behind the rear wheels. And if you have like a stinger hitch on the back, you're going to want to watch that as well. We initially started off the expedition with a stinger hitch, but after a couple hundred miles of driving with it and actually scraping it once or twice coming out of a gas station, we figured that that was really going to limit our ability to go off-road and maybe hit some steeper inclines. The first couple of times we took the truck camper off the road, we noticed immediately that that sway situation that we encountered driving was very exaggerated. So when you hit a bump and it moves, when you're hitting lots of bumps constantly, you get quite a bit of a rock going on in the RV. And so that was something that we really just had to get used to and, and figure out where that swing and that rhythm was. So there is a way that you can drive and kind of move with it um, instead of braking and like kind of shaking the rig unnecessarily. When you're in a situation like that, go slow and try to just move with that rhythm. Let the truck do its thing. Let the sway bars do their thing. Don't cut, uh, cut it off in its natural movement because it might just make it worse. Depending on your truck and camper setup, you're also going to want to be cognizant of that added weight. If you have a four to 6,000 pound truck camper, that's going to really change how your truck sinks into a sandy or muddy situation. Trucks can be modified to put on big mud tires that can handle that a lot better, but if you're riding in a stock vehicle, you're going to want to be very careful. There is some gear that you might want to bring along in case of some situations like that. You can bring traction pads, you can even bring winches and things like that. We had a couple of basic gear that we brought along for most of the situations that we ran into. We did bring a set of traction pads. We fortunately didn't end up having to use them. We brought a shovel, we brought a hand saw and a, a larger saw as well. That actually came in handy one time when we were parked out on a two track and a tree fell down over the two track on the way back to the road. So we had to remove that section of tree to get back to the road and be on our way. You're also going to want to have some tire repair kits and an air compressor on board because you just never know what's going to happen and gravel roads, even if they're not technical, they can really beat up your tires. If you're going to be doing more technical off-roading, you're going to want to look into additional gear to get you out of more intense stuck situations, like maybe a winch or a high clearance jack, but that really wasn't the type of off-roading that we were doing. However, there are lots of classes and a lot of online resources to do your research and figure out what's the best way to do that safely. Ultimately, if you get into a situation that you want to keep going, but the truck and camper isn't fit, you can drop the camper and continue on with just the truck, which gives you a lot more versatility and flexibility and capability while driving off-road. We did do this a couple of times once we drove all the way up to the very top of a mountain and uh, it was very scary, but it worked really well to enable us to get to where we wanted to go without having to bring our RV with us. If you are going off-road with your truck camper, we would recommend don't push it beyond your knowledge and comfort level. We did a lot of scouting, walking ahead to make sure that the path was clear and that we were going to be able to get in just fine. If you do find yourself in a difficult situation and you have somebody with you, let them be the spotter and listen to everything that they have to say. It's great to have eyes on the outside of the vehicle to better see what's going on and where you should go. You're also going to just want to go slow when you're in doubt. One of our favorite things about the truck camper's off-road capability was that we were basically able to turn around wherever we went even if that meant having to make a 30-point turn. 
So while truck campers do have limitations as far as what they can do and where they can go stock, it is pretty easy to modify a truck to go more places and handle more technical things. We found that our truck camper enabled us to go so many more places that we never would have attempted before. So driving a truck camper, it is pretty easy. You just have to get used to it. It's generally lower stress than driving an, a bigger RV. And we found that on travel days, we just didn't have to plan as much to figure out where we were going because pulling into a normal parking lot, pulling into a turnout was no longer a big deal. Like, oh my gosh, am I gonna have space to put my RV? Am I going to have space to turn around if I can't you know, get in here? Uh, am I gonna have the ability to get back out onto the road and speed up and get with traffic? Those things no longer applied. We felt very versatile, very nimble, and that was really exciting on this trip. If you're interested in seeing more of our experience with our truck camper and our Go North expedition, you can check out the Go North video series here on our YouTube channel. It chronicles our expedition from Southern California up to Alaska and all the way to the Arctic Ocean. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.